So not an aroid this week, but we're going to take a look at this little thing, sometimes called the resurrection plant. So this is a Selaginella, and this particular one is Selaginella lepidophila, and it's called the resurrection plant because, guess what? It comes back to life when it's been desiccated like this. It can lose quite a lot of its moisture and come back. So let's take a look at it and have a look why I use this um, non-aroid in my uh, uh, aroid terrariums. So, um, Selaginella is one of those uh, little plants that I use a lot. I have loads of different types that I keep in um, tiny terrariums. You can see here quite a few different types. Uh, along with other things like this, this is a this is one you might recognise. This is Mind Your Own Business or Baby's Tears, and um, it's it's a, such a common plant in the garden. Um, again, this is the variegated type, so the one that you might see the most is that is the bright green one. But I use these in and around my um, larger terrariums, and I use them for um, sometimes for propagating as well. So quite often, what I might do is put um, a bed of Selaginella down in a tray and I'll, and I'll lay a begonia on the top or a, you know, some kind of a cutting and it, and it definitely works as a, a way to um, propagate. But what we're gonna do today is have a look at this particular one. So um, let's have a chat about this itself. So it looks like a little tumbleweed, doesn't it? So it's basically a desert plant, as you can tell. It's, it's dried up and it, you know, it, it does look like it belongs in a desert. Um, but it can survive pretty much complete desiccation. So if it comes across a really dry patch in its native desert environment, it just does this. It just desiccates, rolls itself up, curls itself into a ball and just waits for the next time that there's some moisture that hits it. So as you can see, this does have a root system and it's all dried up. So this will almost certainly just fall off as a new root system develops once it's rehydrated. So theoretically, when you give it water again, which we're going to do in this video, um, these leaves will unfurl and it will be like, you know, it will come back from a ball and it will uncurl and get back its normal shape. And then it will start to photosynthesize once the green's back in it and once it comes back to life. So we should be able to see a massive change in it in just a few hours. And then I'll leave it in a terrarium over the course of a week and we'll see what happens and see if it does sort of resurrect back to a, a state um, where we can use it in that in that terrarium. It's got all kinds of different names. So it's Flower of Stone, False Rose of Jericho, Resurrection Plant, Dinosaur Plant, and um, Stone Flower. You can understand why, because it is just like a dried up, you know, I mean, I don't know where dinosaur plant comes from, but I assume it's because it comes back from, you know, from the dead. So I don't quite understand that one, but hey, names are names. Now I'm gonna use it as a filler plant in one of my terrariums, but it is sold as a novelty item. You can imagine people buy it just for this exact reason so they can see it you know, come back to life. Um, but you'll see how nice it can be and how colorful it can be in the right terrarium environment. So we'll grow it on and see how that looks. So let's just pop it under some lights and in a little tub of water inside a humid terrarium and let's see what happens over the next few hours. So I've decided not to do it in the terrarium. So I, um, I don't like the lighting conditions in there. So what I've done is I've just put it in a windowsill so it's in full, full light and it will get a bit of sunlight in the next hour or two. And I'm literally just beginning to spray it. So um, the camera is running from now. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm just going to spray it all over so I know that it's wet on its on the body itself and then I'll reposition it for the camera and then I'm going to pour about maybe a centimetre or so of water into the um, into the actual tub so it starts to soak it up but before before I just popped it into water what I wanted to do is to get it soaked from the top so I could literally submerge it first of all but I thought it would be good to see this on camera and just see um, what actually happens so um, that will be that will slowly soak down from the top down and hopefully in the time lapse we'll be able to see that you know having an instant change so now what I'll do is I'll take the lid off this bottle and we'll actually just pour water in so we can 
pour a bit into the body of it as well so it can definitely run through it now. And it's stood in about a centimetre of water now. So let's let that cook, see what the time lapse does and see if we can get maybe a couple of hours out and see what actually happens. It's quite funny because as you watch it, you actually do see the water moving occasionally. So as the as the ball takes up the new the, the water and it starts to expand, it, it obviously the the, uh, the leaves kind of unfurl bit by bit, and it, and it makes the water move a little tiny bit. As you can see, it just every now and again just pulls open a little bit. It's quite freaky. So this is an hour in. So as you can see, it's fully expanded, and there's a little bit of green there in the middle. A little bit of green in the water, if you can just about see that as well. So it's made a big difference in just, just one hour, it's made all that difference. But here we are two hours in and it's kind of well open now um, and you can actually see quite a lot of the, the green that's actually already in there. I'll just focus on it in the middle there. You can see how green it actually was in the center. Um, so that's obviously going to start photosynthesizing now. Um, and once it's got enough water, I guess it will just start adding more, um, you know, more material as it starts its its new lease of life. So here we are 24 hours later, and as you can see, it's fully greened up all the way here. There's one or two um, kind of fronds at the end here that have stayed brown, which may not come back, but there is green in them. Um, but the bulk of it has picked up um, and greened up to a you know quite a significant degree. Uh, and it's taken up almost almost all the water so um it you know obviously it, you know it, it sucks that up and uses it instantly and starts the photosynthesis off so um what an amazing plant um what i'm going to do now is a lot of these little fronds have come off um, and i've pulled them off and i've put them ready to propagate so i'm going to see i'm going to take two or three of them i'm going to propagate them and then i'm going to dry them out and see if i can start the process again but what an amazing plant